This is a Chevrolet LS3 6.2 litre V8 engine and behind that is an Audi 4.2 40 valve V8 engine and you're about to find out what they both have in common. Welcome to episode 24 of V8 Stealth Beetle. <laughs> This Audi V8 4.2 litre 40 valve twin turbo beast has eventually burst into life. She is on her way to Texas and in the next episode we will be bringing you the full update on this build. So that's how the Germans do it. Let's see how America tackles the same challenge. In the last episode Jean went public enunciating his aim to offer an alternative to the German solution. So we bought a donor vehicle and stripped her down and we showed you the tried and tested Chevy LS3 6.2 litre engine which is to be shoehorned into the engine bay. As our demo vehicle is going to be a roadster or cabriolet Bradley got to work with his trusty grinder and put his welding skills once again to the test. John got out his tape measure and marker pen and we soon had a body ready for Kubus's deft touch in the body shop. I can't wait to bring you that episode. Jean decided from the start that he's keeping the rear suspension as it is and the Getrag transaxle also stays. This has certainly thrown up a few complications but I'll let the man himself explain further. With the rear suspension, the cradle, the gearbox being in the same original position, the complication of course has been we're sitting with an engine that's a lot longer than the Audi. Longer engine means that the engine now fits against or right through the rear firewall. So the new chassis, we've had to move this part of the, of the firewall quite a lot forward. Not really down here, but this part to clear the cylinder heads of the LS motor. Um, roughly speaking, we've moved, I don't know, give or take three, four inches forward over here. At the same time, that's given us a very nice cross member onto which and through which we can fit these rollover bars for a Roadster version or a Cabriolet version. We are now able to fit the initial Audi V8 or either of the LS versions, the LS1, LS2, LS3, they would all fit in this engine compartment. We keep mentioning this firewall and one would think what's the big issue with the firewall? The reason we can't just move the firewall as we wish is because we don't want to lose cabin space. So the, the, the firewall is as far back as we possibly can and the engine obviously needs to be as far forward as we possibly can to fit into that space. One of the first and immediate challenges were the fact that we had to move the intake manifold around. Otherwise, we'll have a big throttle body sitting right here, and I don't think that's going to work too well for somebody who's trying to drive a car to have induction sound and a filter and everything here. So obviously, we turned that around. The Alice arrives with a, quite a big, chunky water pump that sits right here. So what we've had to do is to develop our own water manifold. So we have water coming out of this two cylinder heads and we have water coming in towards the cylinder heads and the block. But we've had to make it a lot smaller to give us the space that we need in the cab. So as you can see we've made a quick mock-up of what's going to happen. We now don't have a pump anymore. We only have a water in and a water out. We're going to be driving it using an electric water pump. So this electric water pump will be sitting inside the engine bay. The water that leaves the engine enters the pump, gets pushed out through the tunnel to the radiator, which is where it starts to cool down, comes back up in the engine bay and back into the engine. While Jean has been busy sorting out the mechanical complications, Pierre has been getting to grips with the engine management side. Whilst the engine management for the Chevy crate engine is considerably easier than the Audi with its two turbos, there are still some considerable complications to overcome. Pierre, 
uh, we are sitting with one or two little issues that we have to sort out on the loom with the LS development into the V8 Stealth Beetle. The one biggest encumbrance is that in the Chevy, you find that the firewall of the engine sits behind the engine, in other words, between the engine and the gearbox. Whereas in our mid-mounted application, the firewall is ahead of the engine. Chevy designs these looms specifically for the firewall to be behind the engine. So what we have to do in this application is we have to take the loom, I've got to strip it down to its basic components and reshuffle a couple of things. That's the front of the engine. So invariably the firewall in the Corvettes will be over here. So the loom will start from this side and go towards the engine. We have now turned the engine around. So our firewall will be sitting there. So all the plugs will have to be turned around to go to the injectors and the coil packs. And likewise, the intake manifold has also be turned around. So all those plugs will also have to be changed and rerouted. So the big question, of course, is when can we turn the engine? So we've sorted out the intake. Um, we've got a water system that we're busy with. We have an exhaust system, as you guys can see through two big silences. This will still exit as per normal out the back of the Beetle. We've made the exhaust system such that it will bolt onto the standard Alice headers. Um, going forward, we might develop a bundle of snakes, though, like we've seen on the GD40. To be able to turn the engine, um, we need the starter to engage a flywheel. The flywheel is at present being machined in the UK, and they will also be supplying us a double clutch uh, we need fuel to the engine and we will be using the electronics and the electrics which we're going to be bolting on here. So for sure, on the next episode you'll be able to hear her. Another thing, thinking about it, we need a, an intake with a MAF sensor and some kind of an air box. Um, yes, and then she's ready to swing. And who doesn't like a little swinger, uh, a swing every now and then? Next time we'll be updating you on the Audi that's going to the States. If you haven't done so already, please like and share this video. And that only leaves me to wish you all well and safe over the festive season. Have an awesome new year and we'll catch up with you in early 2022.